How will it compete with Adani's, with the Reliance Industries that are also entering FMCG? Here's Mohit Berman on ET Now, his first interview since taking over as chairman. We're concentrating a lot on our power brands. We're expecting uh, business to be um, coming back to normalcy. We've had inflationary pressures recently, but uh, I don't think uh, my tenure will, uh, will change the way the business is being run. What would you want to do differently at Arbor? Is there something you don't want to do differently? No, I think, uh, I think we have a, a very, very strong management team at the top and uh, we believe that um, some of the new sort of uh, sectors or product categories we're going into have a lot of potential and um, I don't see uh, anything really changing except uh, we're going to be now focusing a lot on uh, some new of our newer product categories. So if one were to see, uh, you know, the past and what had kept Mohit Berman busy, a lot of it was in the world of finance. And uh, what we've also now seen recently, what the rumor mills are, that it was your brainchild, what we've seen with EverReady, what's happening with Religare. So I'd like to talk to you a bit about that. What's the game plan when it comes to EverReady? Well, EverReady, as you may know, that we've recently concluded an open offer. So um, we are now on the board. Uh, Dr. The promoters now? Yes and uh, the uh, chairman is Dr. Anand Berman, and I'm on the board. And we've uh, hired uh, external consultants to do a five-year strategic plan. We put, uh, we put some, uh, we made some senior management changes and uh, we are going to be now focusing on the business over the next few years. Unfortunately, the business hasn't really grown in the last 10 years, but uh, we are going to be at least doing double-digit growth from next year onwards. Over the new financial year onwards, is yeah. that the target that's been set out? Yes. Is it growth? Exactly. We are going to, at the moment, we are market leaders in zinc batteries. We are going to be now spending uh, some money on growing our alkaline business, mm -hmm. which, is, uh, which is going to go head on with Duracell. We are going to be uh, spending money on growing our lighting business, and uh, we will evaluate one or two new product categories to, uh, to get into next year. So will all of this be within the battery segment, lighting segment, or is the plan maybe to make EverReady a consumer durable company? Well, we have to first, uh, you know, put the house in order. So um, uh, we have to get back all the uh, market share, which uh, uh, we haven't got in the alkaline business. As I just said, in the zinc, we are market leaders. So our, our focus is going to be actually, you know, growing the alkaline business, growing the and growing the lighting business and of course focus a little bit more on on businesses which uh, have synergy. So uh, I think for the next two or three years we're going to be growing those businesses. Can I ask you what would be the obvious synergies because then those, those could be the product yeah, entries? Yeah, you know, like I mean at this point of time we, we do have a we do have a portfolio of uh, you know torches, rechargeable torches, lighting, bulbs, so those are the businesses uh, that uh, we're going to be focusing on for the next two years. There was, um, you know, a lot of people were speculating when EverReady happened and uh, you guys were also reclassified as promoters that is this going to be a new consumer durable company that's going to be built up maybe like a Havels? Yeah, well, there, there, will, be some, uh, there will be some products that will compete with uh, um, maybe an Havels or, or some of the other consumer durable companies. But um, at this point of time, I think... Uh, but we want to really focus on the existing product categories that we are in, but we do have a plan, uh, and that's what I said, we've, yeah, hired, okay. we've hired Bain, and, but we do have a plan to get into some of the other consumer durable uh, categories. Are you tell me which of the new categories can be? No, that's, <laughs> it's difficult for me to say that at the moment because, you know, as I said, you know, we've hired Bain to work out a, a strategy for us, and, uh, those, uh, and, uh, and we'll only know this at the end of this financial year. So okay. I'm happy to tell you later. Okay, so I'm already requesting yeah, you for no, an interview sure. at the end of the financial year so you can yeah. tell us more about what yeah. Bain Capital said. What about Religare? What's the game plan there? Because now yeah. you guys are the single largest uh, shareholder. Yeah. The, at this point of time, I think the Religare management are still concluding the OTS uh, as, um, settlement with the banks. So unless that doesn't happen, uh, we don't really uh, we don't uh, have a way forward. Uh, once the uh, once the settlement is done with the banks, then uh, being the larger shareholders, we will s evaluate uh, on 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 what to do uh, going forward. 
So that could take a long time. I think there are more than 10 banks. That are yeah, there are more than 10 banks, but I think uh, I think the senior management are really uh, close to uh, doing the OTS. Okay, so that could be next few Will months. We see an open offer the way we saw for Everready. Well, probably it's too early for us to say to answer that question. So it's not on the table or not off the table. Um, well, it's not on the table at the moment. Yes. What is the if, if if when the issues are sorted out? What is the larger vision as far as Delhi Care goes? We don't. Um, it's it's really uh, it's really difficult for uh, for me to uh, really give you a vision on that business as yet because until uh, we don't um, we don't you know we don't see a way forward uh, until the OTS happens and what businesses that. Relegate still has on its table, and what can be grown? I mean, the health insurance business is, of course, the uh, the, uh, the flagship, yeah. but some of the others obviously have been suffering over the last few years. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't think uh, I can really answer that question on the vision until uh, we really get to the nitty gritty on on evaluating each and every business. But this would be obvious, right? The Dabur has ambitions for financial services. No, historically we have been in financial services, but it's only been uh, not through Dabur. It's, it's been through like yeah, you with Aviva, yeah, for yeah, example. Yes. No, we still are. So we yeah. have a life insurance company, we have a general insurance company. Um, so uh, most of these have been in joint ventures with, with you know, foreign partners. I don't think uh, we believe that uh, we, uh, we are the right people to be running financial services businesses. But uh, we see a lot of potential in those, and uh, if there is an opportunity, then to to tie up or team up with uh, with uh, a strategic uh, player who knows how to run the businesses, then we will. So, is that something that you're evaluating? Well, as I said, we're not evaluating <laughs> anything. So, you're not going to give me headlines for Reddit. No, but because, at the because at this point of time, hmm. there are, there isn't any. Okay, fair point. Now, coming to the core business, the, the yeah. consumer-facing FMCG Dabur business. Uh, Great quarter, increased market share in almost all products. Can I ask you how the company managed to do that and at a time when there is so many um, headwinds globally as well as, of course, inflationary pressures? Yes, of course. So, I mean, inflation, uh, you know, has been up 10 percent and uh, we see it, uh, you know, on between the 6 and 10 percent range over the next few quarters. And, of course, uh, um, FMCG has uh, has faced a lot of pressure, especially you know the cost of production is higher due to raw material prices going up, uh, and uh, a lot of our uh, products are very price sensitive. So it's not possible for us to uh, pass on the price increases totally. But uh, in some of the product categories where we have strong market share and uh, and basically can face the price pressure, we have taken price increases and. Uh, uh, and like in our in our healthcare range, um, you know, which which are basically catering to the um, to the upper middle class, it's possible. But they, in the for the rural areas and especially in products which are very price sensitive, like hair oils, it's not possible to pass on full price increases. So um, we are going to continue um, uh, trying to um, you know manage our costs. To, to make sure that our margins are not hurt, but uh, we, we're still going to face a little bit of pressure over the next two quarters. Now, as the big boss of one of India's largest uh, consumer-facing businesses, <laughs> I have to ask you this one question, which is that historically, whenever there is inflation, we see prices go up, right? And when prices cool down, um, we don't see the prices of shampoos, hair oils, etc. come down. Do you think that could change this time around? No, I don't. I mean, I don't think that's entirely true because, especially in in commodity um, products, uh, the prices do change. Uh, like, let me give you an example. Like in like in like in coconut oil, you know, there are many uh, companies that sell pro coconut oil. We have a brand called Anmol. Those uh, those those go up and down depending on on the actual raw material price. But a lot of the branded products, uh, a lot of the branded products don't, uh, go, you know, don't see prices drop because they, we generally don't take the price increase in, you know, in relation with the actual increase in the raw material and packing material prices. So it may not come down. But uh, as in when, as in when these price, as when, as in when raw and packing material prices go up, we don't take it up as as. As, as much as needed, needed. Uh, whatever yeah. we needed. Yeah. The other part is that uh, when prices don't come down, what happens after shrinkflation? Now, everybody had mm. to do shrinkflation yeah. globally. 
Will you revert to old packaging when things are normal, stable? No, I think, you know, uh, we have to be able to, a uh, lot of our products, we actually do lower pack, lower pack size. And I think it's more to expand the, uh, the product market, not to really, uh, you know, Tell, not to make the to make yeah, yeah exactly yeah. not to make the consumer down trade i think it's more to really grow the market and uh, we, you have seen in the last few years a lot of uh, value packs coming out because a lot of price brackets like the 10 rupee price bracket and all you have to have products or you have to have pack sizes in those uh, price range uh, because there's no way then you can expand the market in the rural areas without uh, having um, products in that price bracket correct Okay, so that's, uh, that's going to be something else to watch out for. Now, the timing is, of course, very interesting. Um, you're seeing two very large conglomerates make very big moves when it comes to FMCG. The Adanis have already done it, and um, now we know Reliance Industries is also interested in FMCG. You up for the challenge? Well, you know, I, I think theirs is a different model. I mean, they, they, they have the last mile uh, distribution. I think they want to add products under their own... A brand or private label in those, you know, we 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 historically have been a you know a strong uh, branded FMCG player who who really uh, are more focused on product innovation as well as uh, selling products to the uh, to the advertising route. Uh, we are not uh, we are not in the uh, distribution game uh, in the sense that we don't uh, we don't have our own distribution all. Though we are now focusing a lot on modern trade, on e-commerce, 10% of our business is coming from uh, from e-commerce, and we are launching products specifically for the e-commerce market. So um, I think Kadabo will continue, um, you know, innovating, launching new products, and uh, and focusing on growing our distribution, but not owning it. Okay, so that that's the asset light model, yeah. I guess, yeah. as far as FMCG companies go, but. The buzz is that we will see brands that will come out from the, both of these conglomerates. So the question is then how will uh, the incumbents uh, protect themselves? Will you will have to increase your marketing spends, advertising spends? Well, I think, uh, you know, I, uh, we've always faced challenges. Uh, and, uh, you know, and you I take mean, your private yeah, HOL yeah, as well, yeah. right? So competition actually makes you more nimble. I mean, you become a, a, a lot... A lot uh, of the competition that has come in recently has grown the Ayurvedic market. So we've benefited from that as well. A lot of non-Ayurvedic users are now using Ayurvedic products. Are you talking about Patanjali? Well, I'm just giving you examples. I mean, if you look at, uh, if you look at uh, even in, our, you know, in, our, in the toothpaste market, uh, you know, a lot of uh, our, our double red toothpaste now, because of the competition, has now become you know the, th the third largest. Uh, we're in the we're the third largest uh, oral care players in India, and uh, our double red toothpaste is uh, is the market leader in some places in in the south and in Orissa. So, uh, I think uh, competition uh, is is good to a certain extent. It uh, you know it grows the it grows the category as well as makes you know more nimble. So can I ask you directly, yeah. like, how will the competition work with whether it's an Adani, Wilmer, Patanjali, mm. Reliance Industries? No, we will just have to. We will Keep just doing what you're yeah, doing and yeah, yeah, we have to innovate and have different uh, and different, uh, you know, product uh, categories or different uh, product launches. Like, you know, at, we are we are the market leaders of uh, in honey, but we now have six different variants to see honey, uh, etc. So you have to keep on innovating your product range. Will there be a price war? Do you anticipate a price war of sorts? Because we've seen that in the past when yeah. large conglomerates enter. Yeah, I think uh, you know. I think uh, in this business, because it's not a commodity, uh, price wars uh, you know, don't happen uh, very often. But yes, there is uh, there there is a situation where we have seen price wars before because competition have come in at lower prices. But the idea is that you know we we in the FMCG category, people don't buy the products only because it's on a lower price. You know, there's a there's a brand, there's a quality, all that plays an important part. So you may launch a product at a lower price, but unless it doesn't fulfill, you know, the the the, the person's need or doesn't give them a quality product, uh, the the price doesn't last. Mohit Barman, 